Okay, I think we're all ready. Welcome back to part two of the stone wall renovation. So today we're going to start pointing. First, I want to show you the tools that I'm going to be using. First up, we have a 40 liter bucket. This is going to be where I'm going to mix the, the motor. I have a 14 liter bucket that I use for the dirty water. These, this will be the water I use to keep the tools clean. And then I have a 10 liter bucket that I use for the clean water. This is the water I'm going to pre-measure before I mix into the 40 kilos. And then I have my, uh, my motor. Uh, this is a GVR product I'll talk a little bit about. And then the mixer, which is super important. So stay with me and I'm gonna go through each one of these. Then we're going to mix it up and we're gonna start pointing. Okay, we're just about ready to start mixing. But before we start, I want to point something out. You should always use a good mask when mixing this mortar. This stuff is attracted to moisture and it's very fine and you don't want this stuff getting in your lungs. After splitting the bag of mortar, I'll add one quarter of the bag to five and a half liters of water. Next, I use the mixer to thoroughly mix the mortar into the water. I'll do this a total of four times, making sure it is thoroughly mixed before adding more mortar to the water. The mortar I'm using is a product by CVR. It's called Rinzafo Storico, and the color is Terra Gialla. I'll put a link to the product in the video description. Okay, so I have the motor in place. Here's the wall we're gonna be finishing up. 
I've already done this top portion here and this side over here just for the sake of speed, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I've, what I've done in those areas by working on this area here. So let's go ahead and uh, get the tools that I'm gonna be using on this wall and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those. I found this pointing gun on Amazon for 39 euros. I'll put a link in the video description. So there are two different tools we're going to use here, the piping bag and the pointing gun. I absolutely prefer to use the pointing gun and if you're ever going to try to do this kind of work and you're new to it, I highly recommend using a pointing gun as much as possible. It's going to be a lot easier for you. I've started out with a piping bag and to be honest with you, if I had to always use a piping bag for this entire house, I probably would get someone else to do it. With that said, you're not always going to be able to use a piping gun in every situation because it is a bit bulky. And sometimes you get in some tight corners, especially up near the ceiling or sometimes down near the floor, you're gonna have to use the piping bag. Now, the piping bag, like I said, is not my best friend. I know how to use it and uh, maybe we'll, you know, take a look at how it's to be used. But uh, like I said, I try to use this as less as possible. People that do this for a living swear by these things. And uh, I'm sure if you've been doing this for years, it would be great to use. But uh, for me, I'm all about the pointing gun. So let's go ahead and move into the air where the mortar is and we'll get started. Okay, so now we're ready for pointing. I have the mortar in place, pointing gun is ready. What I need to do is first moisten the wall. I'm going to be working in this area here, so I'm going to moisten this all up and then uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I have the pointing gun all loaded up. Now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to inject the mortar between these stones using this pointing gun. Silly me, the camera wasn't recording when I was demonstrating how to inject this mortar. So I'm gonna continue in this area here above. It's already been cleaned out. What I'm gonna do is use this gun, inject that mortar in here. And what we wanna do is create this sausage look here. If you decide to use a piping gun like this, the key thing to remember is to, every now and then, you wanna mix up the mortar that's in the piping gun. Because what happens is you get these air gaps in there, and then it's not going to, it's not going to uh, put out the mortar as fast as you like. I can control the amount of mortar that comes out of the gun by regulating the speed of the drill. In some areas where it's deeper, I'm gonna to wanna to go faster so I can fill that crevice. In others where it's very, uh, very narrow, I'll slow the drill down and just kind of fill in that tight little area. Now I've demonstrated here on a small section. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to do a larger part of the wall before you go to step two. And step two is to flatten out the mortar, right? And what we're gonna do is we have our little sausages here and we don't want these to dry too quickly. But what we're gonna do is just kind of press these to get that mortar down into the crevice. We're just going to push these flat. Now, there are different tools that you can use. Because my stones are 
have big gaps, I prefer to use this, uh, this, narrow, tr this narrow trowel. Another tool that you might want to use, especially if you're using brick, would be a cat's tongue trowel, something like this. With this, you can get into these narrow gaps very easily. Uh, as I said, for me, this works just fine. And what I just want to do is flatten these out. And uh, doesn't have to get, you don't have to be pretty with it because a lot of this is going to be excess that we're going to take off later. And uh, that's in the third step. So now I usually work alone. Well, just say I work 95% of the time alone. Occasionally I get a volunteer. Um, so when I'm doing this work, I have to keep in mind as I'm injecting to, I do an, a, an area, maybe um, two square meters. And then I stop injecting and I go back and I start flattening out all of the mortar. And I do that because I don't want the mortar to dry too quickly. Now, something to keep in mind, when you're working with stone like this versus working with brick, this mortar is gonna dry at a different, at a different rate. So with brick, it dries a lot faster because the brick is going to absorb the water out of the mortar. And then you're gonna find that the mortar is driving a lot, is drying a lot faster. With the stone, you, you have a bit more time. You can continue on. I've, I've gone, I don't know, 45 minutes and been able to go back and flatten it out. I prefer not to go that long, but it's happened. The walls in this house are primarily stone, but there are areas where I find brick. And in those areas, I have to be careful because I inject the mortar and I need to go back a lot sooner than when I'm working with the stone or it's gonna dry. And as it starts to dry, it starts to become kind of a hard, sandy uh, texture and it doesn't get down into the crevice when I push it. I have to really push it hard to get it in there, okay? So just something to keep in mind. Okay, hopefully you can see this. There's a difference between the area that was completed at the top and then the area where I injected the mortar and have already flattened the mortar. And we get a closer look here. You can see here, up there, it's already been completed. You can tell how smooth it is. And then down here, this is how it looks after I've injected the mortar and then I went over it with a trowel and flattened it flatten it all out. At this point, what you need to do is wait for it to firm up a bit. So, and you can check it like now it's quite moist. You can see how moist that actually is. And what you needed to do is firm up. Usually takes, now it's gonna depend on the humidity, but uh, about two hours, I come back and hit this with a wire brush. Some areas will still be a little too moist so I have to be careful with it. But uh, today I have a, a bit of a time constraint, which brings me to an important point. If you are under some sort of time constraint, you have to be somewhere. In my case, I have to go pick up my son from high school. What you don't want to do is allow the mortar to drive after you've injected it and it has that sausage look. You don't want that to dry. You want to make sure that within shortly after injecting it, you wanna go through with the trowel and flatten it all out. There is no way I would leave without making sure that all of this has been flattened out. Because if you leave that sausage look on the wall and it starts to dry up, especially if you let it dry completely, the only way to fix it is to break it all out and start all over again. And let me tell you, in my earlier video, I showed you how easy it is to take this mortar out when it's the old mortar. When this stuff dries, it is rock hard and very difficult to take off. And so you have to make sure that you get it all flattened before you go on to the next step. So I'm gonna walk you through the next step. You wanna make sure that the mortar has dried, is nice and firm before you start using the brush. Then you're gonna use the brush to add texture to the mortar while also cleaning the stone. And what you want to do is get any excess mortar that dried on the stone while adding the texture to the mortar. And it's very important that you hit every part of the mortar to add that texture. 
because if you miss a part, it'll be obvious. It will have a more smooth look to it and it won't blend in well. As I'm doing this, I like to follow up with the brush to just kind of wipe away the excess dust and uh, get a better look at uh, the final result. I'm standing here now in what is basically the finished wall. There is a small section down in the corner where I ran out of mortar, so I couldn't finish the wall entirely. But for the most part, the wall is done. And in fact, by showing you the unfinished part and the finished part, you can really see the dramatic difference. Okay, down here near the floor, not Kobe, you can see here, this is the part that I did not finish. When we come up, you can see there's quite a difference in the way that it looks. As we go up, we get higher. And you can see this is the area that I initially started with the, uh, with the demonstration for injecting the mortar. Everything has been cleaned with a wire brush. And uh, I'm really happy with the results. It looks fantastic. I only have three more walls to do. I hope you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments and have a great day.